You keep asking about it, so I bought another Osmo Pocket, and we're gonna give it the old 10-month checkup. I mean, this is basically an all-in-one stabilized camera video platform that on paper should be able to be your one-stop shop for all your travel video needs. But before I sold my original one a few months ago, it was okay-ish. I mean, I had problems with its focusing system, and I thought the field of view was a little too narrow for what you're actually paying for. But since my final video on the subject, DJI did release a firmware update that is supposed to substantially upgrade the troubled continuous autofocusing system. So how does the Osmo Pocket stack up 10 months later? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Man, it's just follow-up week around here. I mean, that is because a lot of really great gear is on the horizon, so this is like the perfect opportunity to see how like the last generation went. And now, it's the Osmo Pocket's turn. I actually really like what this could be. Now, if you remember my minimalist video gear from NAB, I was only rocking this camera, and I did get some great shots out of it. But like I said in the intro, the focusing system was just it was darn rough and I couldn't trust whether or not my videos were actually in focus. And if you can't trust that, then why have a camera, right? There's no better time than the present, so let's hop out there and see how the autofocus system is doing. <laughs> okay, let's do the autofocus test of the DJI Osmo Pocket with the newest firmware. I've just got it right here. We are gonna set it to continuous autofocus. Flip it, flip it good. Do the face tracking, one, two. Do the face tracking. I do, I do very much like the face tracking on this camera. Record. Okay, now this is not gonna be necessarily a vlogging test. This is just more of a test of how is the autofocus doing? So we do have it set to continuous autofocus and we're just gonna see if the focusing is working better because when I first got this camera and even five months later, you know, when we made those series of videos, the autofocus was not good. Like it was not good, it just was not usable, it wasn't trustworthy, and if it's not gonna be usable or trustworthy, I can't, like I can't bring it with me. Like the point of a camera is to have, the, it, at the bare minimum, the image has to be in focus, right? And if you're gonna have a small camera like this, I would just prefer that it have infinity focus, or because like this camera, the Canon EOS R, does have really good autofocus. It's got Canon's dual pixel autofocus, so I don't have to worry about it. I see the box around my face. I know we're good. I see the box around this face. Hopefully we're good. You guys know. I have no idea right now, but we're good. Okay, so this has been like the vlogging autofocus test. Now let's set it down. We're going to do an autofocus test. So the big thing that I recently got, uh, so the big thing this time around with this camera is I got the wireless module. So I really want to see if this module paired to my phone will make a better like overall experience. So let's set it down. Okay, so now we've got the Osmo Pocket. We're gonna set it down real quick and we're just gonna see how the wireless module works. So what I really like about this wireless module is how easy it is to connect to your phone. So check it out. All you have to do is, camera, all you have to do is hit connect. Oh, I guess it connected like while we weren't even paying attention. So all you have to do is like hit connect, it connects, it takes a few seconds. Like I thought I was gonna have to go into settings and mess around with that, it just works. That's so awesome, like that's, DJI, I've got to give them credit. Their app is working really great here. Okay, we're now we're focusing on me. Let's record. And again, we are in continuous autofocus. And the tracking on this thing is just still so good. Like, I got to give DJI credit on one thing is their tracking has always been on point. Whether it's their drones or these kind of cameras, like when they do tracking, it really works. But we are in continuous autofocus. So let's see, is the autofocus working or not? Can you see my backyard that needs mowed? It's just the hill. The hill sucks so much to mow, so we don't, we don't do it that often. Okay, how is the autofocus working? Because the tracking is working just phenomenally well. I really, really hope the autofocus does well on this. Because again, if you guys remember when we were doing the reviewing the cheapest series, uh, what I wanted this for was to be like a cameraman. So it would, you know, somebody could be following me and hanging out with me. So somebody could be following me instead of just having like a locked off shot like the EOS R over here, which is fine. It's a fine looking image and it's a fine looking shot, but I like having a little more dynamic stuff. And if it looks like I have a cameraman, that's a little more fun. So I've been tracking this on the phone. You guys can see the phone right here. Um, I really hope that you guys know if this has been in focus or not. I really hope it's in focus because uh, this wireless module is basically, come on face, you got my face? 
Oh, you gave up. You gave up on my face, Osmo. There you go. Uh, so this wireless module is easily, I really hope this looks good because the wireless module has been fantastic. Okay, that's been the quick autofocus test with continuous autofocus with phase detection. Let's hop back inside and talk about the rest of the camera. And we're back. Holy cow, it's September. Why is it so darn hot out there? So I know DJI said they were unlocking phase detection autofocus with this camera. However, that's not how phase detection works. So unless it's always been on the sensor and they intentionally decided to cripple it for the last few months, I mean, that's just not how that kind of autofocus works. Now, I will leave a link in the description to a video that Gerald Undone did on the different kinds of autofocusing systems to give you a little more in depth on that. But a quick synopsis, phase detection in the current sense of the word, like in a Sony camera sense, means that the system is built onto the sensor itself to be able to determine that focus. I mean, heck, if we could just add phase detection wherever, I mean, the Panasonic cameras would be the kings of everything because they also do not have it built on the sensor. I do think the autofocus now is okay. It did hold up outside really well. It's gonna have to take me some time to build some trust with this system because like I said previously, I missed a lot of shots, so. Okay, DJI, you've now got my attention and we will be using this a lot more because outdoors, it did hold focus very, very well. Now, the video was kind of jumpy because the shutter speed was so high, but overall, the focusing worked. Now, the Osmo Action is a very similar camera, except it has everything in focus. And I do wish, no matter what, I do wish that the Pocket did the same thing because it would be infinitely more useful. I wouldn't now be concerned, is it in focus? Is it not in focus? Does it need to build my trust? I mean, it wouldn't. I have been using the single target autofocus using this little wireless module too, um, because when you can control it with the phone and you can set the focus the first time, it does work really well. So I would almost say that you are required to have this wireless module to make this camera work because the whole point of the camera is to be tiny and to not have it like physically connected to your phone. I mean, hooking my phone up to it basically makes it a point and shoot sized camera, which is not something I want in this device. If I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna just bring my point and shoot and put it on a gimbal. I do still think the image quality is great though. The Osmo Pocket continues to be able to record up to 4K 60 frames per second. And the more that I use DJI's Cinelike profile, the more I like it. I rarely ever grade it. I mean, basically I never grade it because I like how it looks straight out of camera. Now it's nowhere near as flat as the Canon log that we're recording in right now with the EOS R, but it takes that over sharpness and over saturation down a little bit. And maybe it's me, I mean, it could totally be me. But as I get older, I find that I like a more subdued image. The more I make these YouTube videos, the more I try to subdue everything. At the beginning it was like, everything needs to be over saturated because that makes it pop and look cool. I, I don't do that anymore. The stabilization here, of course, continues to be class leading, except there isn't really a class of cameras like this, so technically everything this does is class leading. These are arguments I have with myself when I write the scripts for these videos. But the stabilization is amazing, and it's still the selling point of the camera. While I do think electronic image stabilization is the future, we're at a point right now where when you try to manually dial in settings on the two kings of EIS, the GoPro Hero 7 Black and the Osmo Action, both are right there, they're both right there. Uh, you do get like wobbles that make your video look terrible and both cameras do it. So it is something with like trying to electronically use an algorithm to judge stabilization. You don't have to worry about that here because thanks to the fully mechanical gimbal, it doesn't matter if you're manually dialing stuff in, it doesn't matter if you're in great light, in low light, in any light, it just works. And I mean, as far as I go, I can't give a feature any higher praise than that. I mean, look, it's a full gimbal, like that continues to shock me that they were able to build this. Usability does continue to be kind of meh though. I do like the front facing screen, but it's a square. So if you wanna see widescreen 16 by nine, you are gonna lose a chunk of it because black bars are gonna come across and it's gonna shrink it. You'll be able to see everything in frame, but it's gonna make it harder to see. Plus the menus are still pretty fiddly to work through. And I do like that we now have access to the full range of features from this teeny screen, but it's just not the easiest to like try to go through because you gotta like, flip and tap and it's, it is kind of rough. Now again, I've been plugging the wireless module into it because controlling the camera with your phone is just so much easier. And since it's so quick and easy to connect the little module, you gain a lot of time just doing everything through your phone and then you just leave those settings in place when you use the camera by itself. I love, it, this wireless module is basically the true version of the Osmo Pocket. If you have not used the wireless module, you haven't really used the Osmo Pocket yet. You still cannot remove the battery, which sucks and will continue to be a ding against the camera. But I also just don't like integrated non-removable batteries in any tech. So that's not necessarily me trying to single DJI out, but it just stinks across the board. 
I do like that all of the accessories are pretty much now available when it launched. It was missing a lot of them. So if you do want the dive housing, you, you could use this and using this thing underwater might be insanely awesome. The audio adapter is now on hand, but I'd personally never use it. Again, I'm using the wireless module and I would just prefer to record my audio off camera if I need to be. I would use my Zoom H1N because it just, it's incredibly good. But that's the Zoom H1N, I plug it in a lot of videos, but that's just because it's fantastic. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Is the Osmo Pocket finally the monster it was always meant to be? Yes and no. Now, when I made the last video, I was pretty firmly against the Pocket. It's just how it was. It screwed up a lot of my images and it just wasn't able to do the things I wanted. And the price was so high, if it's not gonna do that, you might as well just buy a regular camera. But now using the new autofocus system and the wireless module, absolutely changes the whole experience for me. The autofocus is now usable, which is very awesome. And I like the tracking capabilities. And it was like we saw, it worked perfectly fine keeping my face in focus. So I don't actually have to touch the camera. However, if you can only afford the camera itself and you can't get the accessories, I wouldn't buy it again. The accessories do add a very steep chunk on top of it, and they have features that you basically need to make the camera work well. So if you can't afford the accessories, do not get this. If you do want a fully stabilized tiny little camera that no one is gonna know is recording pretty darn good 4K images, then I do feel better about recommending this today than I did five months ago. Get those accessories. Thanks for watching. Just as the light died. Just the light died like right as we finished. I think it overheated. It's really hot in here.